Welcome to IVF This, episode 65, Feeling Good Enough. Welcome to IVF This. I'm your host, Emily Ginn. I'm a mother to two beautiful and feral boys. I'm married to my favorite person in the world. I'm a social worker, a life coach, and an IVF warrior. I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and emotions during your IVF journey, to break free from anxiety and regain control of your life, even in the midst of infertility. I'm going to teach you to say IVF this to how we think about, talk about, and experience infertility. Let's go. Hello, 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 my beautiful friends. You're all doing so, so well. This winter here in Texas has been a, a little interesting. It's been relatively warm for the most part. It's often sitting around 60 degrees-ish or around 15 Celsius. I do have a, a large international audience after all. But it's like the winter keeps getting mad and storming off and then coming back in and screaming. And another thing, like two days ago from when I wrote this, it was 80 degrees or 27 Celsius outside. And then in 18 hours or so, it dropped to 28 degrees, which is minus two Celsius. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I know that I have a pretty good size following in what I would call the frozen food sections of the world, like Canada and stuff like that. And I have a few Canadian clients that have laughed at me. But let's be real. That's a pretty dramatic swing with almost no time to acclimate yourself. I'll stop bitching about the weather and I'll get off this particular soapbox, but I just wanted to let you guys know how I'm doing. But today, what we're talking about and what I would say is probably the primary and underlying reason that we feel so terrible so much of the time. And that's not an understatement. When you boil down all of the work that I do, and pretty much every other coach, therapist, counselor in the world, it relates to self-worth. This idea of good enough. It's like the root of all of our crap. Work pressure, body image, weight, relationships, and yes, a million percent infertility. So many of my clients come to me with this idea that IVF kind of started or infertility kind of started their, what maybe they consider their downward spiral. And then the more that we dig, the more that we find that that's not actually true. There's always kind of been this thread of not good enoughness. And what happened is when they were confronted with infertility and being on that journey, well, it was like a giant ass spotlight just shone down on all of the things that they already didn't like about their lives. In essence, their self-worth. So over the past few podcasts, we've laid out some really important groundwork, boundaries, understanding fear and safety, black and white thinking, and a bunch of stuff. But this self-worth and being good enough is kind of the root of all of that. Now, don't fret. Doesn't mean that once we cover this topic, we're done. Nope. I've still got a lot of stuff to talk about. I just don't want us to go any further without addressing this particular albatross around all of our necks. But the first thing I want to teach you is how to feel good enough. So let me ask you this question. Have you ever had the thought, I'm just not good enough? I'm just not good enough in this way, in this particular way. If you say no, then I want you to question if that's really true. The truth is we all do it sometimes. Some of us might experience the thought more frequently. Some of you might think that thought all the time and in multiple areas of your life. Some of us may only think about it occasionally and in very specific areas, but we all do think about that and we all wonder on that same level. And I say this all the time, so you might have heard it before, but I just want to back up kind of the claim with Brene Brown's research on shame. Shame is a feeling that we feel when we think we're not good enough. And according to her research, everyone feels shame at some point Unless you have like sociopathy or psychopathy or something like that, right? Unless you have a mental disorder that prevents you from having feelings, you're going to experience shame. But every healthy human being does this at some point, at some time, in some way, experience shame, which is the feeling that comes from thinking that you're just not good enough. So that's so important for you to know, because a lot of us 
think the thought, I'm not good enough, and then we feel shame. And then we think that something is wrong. Well, first, you think something is wrong with you. But then as you gain awareness that that's just a thought, and hopefully you have some other conscious, higher level thoughts that counteract that, where you know you are actually good enough, you are valuable. So then when your subconscious thoughts come up and cause you to question it, you think that there's something wrong that you're thinking that. I hope that tracks. At first, you feel shame because you think you're not good enough. And then as you go along and progress in your self-discovery, in coaching, in therapy, all of a sudden you can counteract the initial thought and then the subsequent thoughts, you start making that mean something about you, right? So all of that is very normal. And that's the first thing I want to offer you is that there's nothing wrong with you thinking that. In fact, it's right that you would think that. It means you're mentally, emotionally a healthy, stable adult. It means you got a human brain. Yay! (laughs) Congratulations. You're totally human. I find a lot of comfort that the people that I look up to sometimes question if they're good enough. Oprah, Beyonce, Dolly Parton, Malayla, Brene Brown, every single one of them. Now, they might question it to varying degrees, Like it might not be something they question all the time, but they do and have questioned their worth or being good enough. Why do we all question our worth? Because it's part of that tribe mentality that we have. And most importantly, how our brains have evolved to understand things. We had to fit into a tribe to stay into it, to fall in line. If we didn't measure up, then we could have been cast out. So there was like this constant comparison that we would draw between ourselves and our peers or even our perceived superiors. And because our brains have always kind of been a-holes, the comparison always concluded with we were never good enough. So you add that into our very capitalistic society, certainly within the United States, but we don't have a monopoly on that. It exists elsewhere. And the social cultural understanding that we are only as good as what we produce then we can never produce enough. Recently, I think I've probably seen the movie Encanto like, I don't know, a thousand times. And one of the last times I was watching when um, Mirabel confronts her abuela towards the end of the show or end of the movie saying, it will never be enough. We will never be enough. And I was kind of like, we all have that abuela in our brains telling us it's never perfect enough. It's never enough. This abuela is like the cultural and social messaging that we have been subjected to for centuries now because of how ubiquitous social media is in our everyday lives now. It's like we get this constant bombardment of people only showing the shiny, happy, luxurious aspects of their lives, which feeds this false narrative and ambiguity around what is quote unquote good enough. So all that to say, this is a completely normal experience that we all have. There is nothing wrong with experiencing or questioning good enoughness. Our brains question whether or not we're good enough. That's just the way it goes. It's totally normal. There's nothing wrong. We don't need to completely solve for it. Now, we are going to try and lighten it up a bit because I do think for some of us, it drives our behavior way more than it needs to. And I think you're sort of believing it when your brain says, am I good enough? Maybe I'm not good enough. And I don't think that that's necessary either. I think that you can sort of counter it, if that makes sense. And I want to talk to you about that now. So let's just dive into a little bit of this thought. I'm not good enough. What the hell does that even mean? What does it mean to be enough? What are you trying to be enough of? How do we know we're enough? What makes us enough? Is it if other people think that? How could that be? Because some people might think that you're amazing and some people might think you're, they might nothing you, right? They might not have any opinion about you. Other people might not care for you at all. So how do we know if we're enough? It's not a thing that's provable or real or concrete in any way that is useful. It's a made up construct. And there's this thing as being good enough or not enough. It's not a real thing. 
Isn't that amazing? Right? Like it's a bunch of crap that is made up. It's like that improv show whose line is it anyway, where everything is made up and the points don't matter. Somewhere along the way, people just started deciding that there were arbitrary things that mattered to them. And then other people started comparing themselves. And it just kind of spiraled from there. And the other thing is, most importantly, you are enough. And there's also things that you're not going to be good at, right? There are ways that you're not going to be good at something, but it doesn't have to tie to your self-worth. You're not supposed to be better than you are. Did you know that? You're not supposed to be further along than where you are. You're not supposed to be capable of more than you are, right? I'm not suggesting that you don't have abilities or capabilities, but when you run a 12-minute mile, speaking personally, and you tell yourself that you're capable of running a six-minute mile and you hold yourself to that standard, that's what I'm talking about. You might be capable of running a six-minute mile, maybe, but those are like the elitist of the elite athletes. So if we're starting from where I start at 12-minute miles, we might not get there. You are perfect and whole and complete exactly as you are. Now that knowledge, again, reiterating, that knowledge does not stop us from achieving. It doesn't stop us from setting or achieving goals. It just helps take the drama and the suffering out while you're in pursuit of those goals. What is also true is that there are things that you're not as good at as other people. This was a hard lesson for me. And that's not a problem until we decide it was a problem. And I decided for a long time that it was a problem, right? I think that I am a very bright and articulate, humorous person. And you know what? There are women that are brighter, more articulate, more humorous than I am. I just secretly hope that they're wielding their power for good and not evil. As I have tried. (laughs) Now, I also have pretty touchy asthma. And there are people in the world whose lungs don't decide at a moment's notice to stop working properly or to be super touchy. I have one ovary because my left one kept growing giant ass cysts and had to be surgically removed. Like these are all truths for me. And there are so many people who have both of their ovaries without any types of those issues. But I also know that they suffer too. They have a different struggle. I'm pretty sure it was Brene Brown. We should start a drinking game for this episode for Brene Brown, because I think I've already (laughs) dropped her name like five times. Anyway, this quote from Brene Brown, no one writes for free. We all have our own stuff. This idea of good enough is so pervasive in the infertility community because we literally make, whether we can get pregnant or not, stay pregnant or not, mean something inherent about our worth. That if we were, in fact, quote unquote, good enough, then this would not be happening. It's as if infertility or miscarriage confirms Every terrible thing we've believed about ourselves, but never really wanted to admit. Or even that there is like this good enough tax (laughs) that you haven't paid. Like you have the house, the relationship, the financial security, and now it's time for a baby and that's not happening. So where did I go wrong? What did I do that was wrong? What didn't I do? What wasn't good enough? And then when you get started on this journey, well, then it's like a Rolodex of things you have to do, should do, need to do in order to do it right, to be good enough, to try hard enough. We kill ourselves over books, essential oils, supplements, acupuncture, diets, throwing all of our plastic containers away to go for glass, going scentless, even shoving jade eggs up our unmentionables, and yet If our efforts do not match the outcome, then there was something, anything that we either did do 
or didn't do enough of or do it correctly. And therefore, we're not good enough. I want to share with you what my amazing RE told me like five and a half years ago when I was freaking out about our transfer that was coming up. She said, it will either take something incredibly intentional or something incredibly neglectful for you to have that much of an influence over this process. Now, I am not poo-pooing the idea of supplements or any of the stuff that I mentioned, not at all. But it's a question of doing those things and then using them against yourself. That's what I'm not about. Using them as sort of this backward confirmation that you aren't good enough. Like, see, I did all this stuff and it still didn't work. So clearly that means that I'm not good enough. That's what I take issue with. You know, IVF is such a weird, weird thing because the effort that we put into the process does not usually equal the outcome, right? And that is a mind meldy screw job of an idea. So how do we break this cycle? Well, number one, we have to acknowledge that doing all of these things and believing it's not good enough or that you're not good enough is optional. It's optional. You know how I know it's not an inevitability that if we do all of those things and we don't get what we hope for and therefore we make that mean we're not good enough? Because I know so many women that have had other thoughts. They didn't make it mean that they weren't good enough, right? Because it's not some sort of universal truth. It's not like two plus two equals four. If it's not a universal truth, then it's an optional thought. I realize to you, it might not feel optional. And that's okay. Most of our thoughts when we're being introduced to thought work don't feel optional. Hell, six years into thought work, sometimes our thoughts don't feel optional, right? Like, I want you to take yourself out of that equation and make someone else the central character. Make that person your closest, dearest, most beloved person, friend, romantic partner, whatever. What would you say to them? They did all the same things you did, and they still got the same outcome. How would you treat them? If the way you treat yourself differs from the way you would treat them, that's how you know that shit's optional. So if you can buy into the premise that it is, in fact, optional, then how else can we approach it? Well, it's a question of reframing. Cognitive reframing is a psychological technique that consists of identifying and then changing the way situations, experiences, events, ideas, and or emotions are viewed. This kind of ties in a lot with acceptance too. So let's say that you took all of the supplements that were suggested, offered, or researched. Basically, you crammed two fistfuls of pills down your throat per day. You ate clean, you did acupuncture, you took all the meds the doctor prescribed in the correct method and dosage, you attended all of your appointments, and you generally took care of yourself. Then I say, the reframe is, I did everything that was asked of me and more. Man, I really, really showed up for myself and my family. I controlled all of my controllables. I didn't have any say in how my body reacted to the medication, how my follicles developed, how the sperm and egg interacted, not how the embryo or the uterus interacted. What I could control, I did, and I showed the hell up. That's the reframe. And again, this is not in service of like silver lining or some positivity BS. This will not take the grief away from a failed cycle or a failed transfer. That is going to hurt. But what it can do when you practice it, and by practice it, I mean repeat it to yourself until it is believable, it will lessen your suffering. You know that added layer of dirty pain that we lay on top of ourselves when we're already hurting? That place of self-loathing and judgment? That place. We lessen that. We show love and compassion to ourselves. We acknowledge that there are things that we did, good things, amazing things, 
and that there was no right or wrong. There was no intention or no neglect that interfered with this working. You showed up. And sometimes, and this is the shit of infertility treatments, we often don't get what we hope for. Conversely, we often do get what we hope for in the same way, but we can't predict that. Because it's just like this amorphous thing. But we don't really question. But have you noticed that when we do get the thing we hope for, we don't really question our good enoughness there, or at least not in the same way, because then it just morphs into something else. But when you practice acknowledging and recognizing where and how you showed up, that's a skill that you continue to use for, well, the rest of your life. And that is what I want for you. You are all, all of you are working so damn hard on this dream. Blood, sweat, tears, money, all of it. Do not discount all that you have done, all that you have become, because it doesn't match some perfectly curated Instagram grid or your expectations. Don't let it discount just because you didn't get the outcome you expected. The inputs were there and you were doing an amazing job. You are doing enough because you are the one that decides what enough is. You are enough. Always. It is God-given. It is your divine, inherent birthright. You are enough. Even when you don't believe it, you are. And I will hold that belief for each and every one of you until you believe it yourself. Okay, that is what I have for you, my beautiful friends. Have a wonderful week and I will talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of IVF This. If you like what you've heard, click subscribe and follow to make sure you don't miss an episode. And if you want to learn more, head over to www.ivfthis.com coaching.com to learn how to work together.